Coach, can you just go over your thoughts on the team now? You're, I don't know how many practices in, three practices in. Well, you know, that's <clears throat> we got a long ways to go. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the effort of the 105 young guys that we uh, that we have out there for the most part. Uh, and we're work in progress. Uh, I think uh, the uh, the retention level I think has been very good, uh, meaning that. You know, whatever it is, that, and we put in an awful lot. At, uh, we don't put it all in in one day, but we, you know, we implement our entire offense, defense, and all of our special team stuff, which is quite a bit, uh, throughout the first four, five days. And so there's an awful lot that goes in, and they've done a nice job of retaining all of that. So the execution on the field. Uh, from an assignment standpoint, has been uh, has been good. From a fundamental standpoint, has been uh, good, not great, but but good. And so, you know, we're we're making headway. Uh, I think we, you know, we had some lapses. I think uh, yesterday in practice number two that uh, had to do with, you know, something other than execution and uh, and effort, uh, but. You know, I think we got those corrected today. I, uh, I think the vast majority of our guys have kept themselves well conditioned. Uh, you know, the demands are pretty extensive, uh, and they've responded to it. I think uh, quite well. And you know, all of our most of the work I say all of it most of the work we do is, uh, you know, ones against ones and, uh, and so on down the road. So, uh, you know, it's hard for me to be happy all the time because, you know, one side's going to do better than the other side. So, uh, you know, it tears me apart. But, uh, and everybody's had their part in it. I think yesterday our defense probably uh, had, uh, had a better practice than our offense did when they, when they went together, went against each other uh, today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, I thought our offense uh, came back and responded well, and uh, had a had a positive workout. So, and it'll go back and forth like that, I think, during the course of the of the uh, two a day practices. And you have some junior college players that you were waiting on. What's the status of? I think there's four. Guys uh, we have four young guys that uh, still are uh, not not in not here yet. Uh, all four of them. It's my understanding. Uh, should be here, should qualify and be here. They're finishing up uh, uh, academic issues, and uh, it's my understanding that all four of them uh, have or will make it. Remains to be seen. They're not on campus yet. The expectation is that they will be here this week. Though you've got maybe three or four guys that are former walk-ons that are starters, when a walk and they're also in leadership roles as captains, does it take a special type of character slash player to come on as a walk-on, earn a starting role, and then become a leader of the team? Well, I, I think it takes a, a young person who has the value system that we're interested in to be able to do that. And and you're right, you know, I. I you know, I, I try not to distinguish between, you know, uh, where you came from and what your scholarship status is, et cetera. But, uh, but you know, what you say is true, and, and they've uh, done quite well from a performance standpoint. They've done quite well from a, uh, uh, a leadership standpoint as well. And it's just because they have a quality value system in place. Uh, and that's a good thing. So the more of those kind of guys we have, the better, whether they're scholarship guys or not. Bill, uh, Colin Klein is, is back here. Uh -huh. Colin, Colin's back with the, the program. So what are his responsibilities going to be? And why is it so important for you to, to bring former players back? You've had a lot of them back as, as coaches and graduate coaches over the years. Yeah, I, I think uh, I read someplace, I didn't know this, that we have uh, on our coaching staff having ex players in our in our program as coaches uh, we have uh, more in our program than anybody else in the, in the country has of their exes uh, I, th I think it's important because uh, I know them 
and I know what kind of value system they have. They know me, they know the program, they know what the tremendous demands are of the program, and they've experienced it. And so consequently, you know, for them to uh, accept the opportunity to come back uh, tells me that they're, they're on board with all of that. And, and they truly are. And it's, you know, I, I enjoy having the, you know, the coaches here that uh, have been through the program as players. And I think we have five. Uh, you know, Sean played here and Blake played here and uh, Mo played here. Uh, the uh, uh, Dana played here, and I, we've got one more. I'm not sure which one, but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm pleased and proud to have you know have those guys with us. And then you take you know our GAs and undergraduate assistants like Colin. Uh, it's great having them you know back if indeed they want to get invested in the coaching profession. Uh, I've tried to encourage each one of them not to. Uh, in this day and age, I, I'm not sure it's the best direction for a 22-year-old, but by the same token, I mean, they're, they're passionate about it, and if I can help them, I want to be able to help them. And they're good people. They, they lend themselves to our program. Bill, you, you've had, it's, there's, there's a lot of this is self-evident, but I wonder if you can describe this. You've had some amount of success with second-year quarterback in your system, and, and I just wonder if there's more than meets the eye to that in, in terms of why that's been the case. Uh, so the second year, you mean a guy second year starter, starting say, yeah. for his second year? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are in, in that respect. Uh, but, you know, it's just, I, to me, I think it's probably common sense that uh, if you're if it, it's easy to say you should be better the second time around than the first time around, but I don't believe that. You know, I believe you've got to you've got to make your way the second time. The, the opportunity to be improved uh, from one year to the next is uh, is certainly there, but you have to uh, you have to do the things that allow you to become better at that position. But and I think you know most of the guys we have do that. I mean, they're invested. I believe. I mean, you can ask them, but you know, I believe they're invested in that concept of daily improvement and. If indeed they are, then whether you were a starter or not last year, you probably should be better this year than you were last year. Bill, the passing game looks like it could be a potential strength for the offense based on returnees. Could this be a team that perhaps throws the ball a little bit more? Or will you need to throw maybe to help set up the, the run game to kind of get those guys going? Well, I, you know, uh, that that's not – you know, the philosophy we labor under doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. I, uh, but, you know, really, uh, my interest is in becoming as balanced as we possibly can. That's always been uh, the situation. Now, there have been times when we've tried to be balanced, and yet, you know, one side, you know, either the run game or the pass game kind of uh, outshines, so to speak, the other, the other side of it. But the intent is always to try to create that balance, and we'll try to do the same thing. Uh, and then, uh, you know, will the passing game uh, oversee the, the running game? I, I hope that's not the case. doesn't mean it won't, but I, but I hope that's not the case. I hope we can maintain the balance that I'm talking about, uh, spread the ball around uh, in, in the passing game and the running game as well. You know, have some balance by by situational offense, down and distance, field position. You know, not get caught off where you know if it's third down eleven, you're going to throw the football 100 percent of the time, et cetera, et cetera. So, the, the more balance we can create, the more unpredictable we come, and that there's there's a little bit of an advantage in becoming unpredictable. I think. So. Coach, uh, you haven't typically started a lot of true freshmen in the past, and nobody really does. But uh, for you, you've got Calvin Warmack, who was heavily decorated through his high school career and uh, a need at running back. What do you think of him so far, and, and how realistic is it that he'll actually uh, have an opportunity to produce for you guys at running back? Well, the opportunity exists. I mean, every young guy in our program, my, my approach with him is the same as it is with every incoming freshman player, and that is don't make a decision, I won't make a decision that you're going to redshirt your freshman year 
until you know we get close to the beginning of the season, in other words, a week away or so. And you go out and compete with the idea that, uh, hey, you know, I, I want to compete to be a number one. And if you become a number one and we get a week from uh, game time, if you, you know, if you're wanting to lay it all out there and you're wanting to play, then uh, that's fine. We'll do it. You know, and if you're uh, number two, you've got to make that decision. Do I want a red shirt or not? That's their decision to make because that's a major, major decision in their life. I'll counsel with them in regards to whether I think it's the best idea or not. More often than not, you know, I would ask the question. Uh, I mean, you can all relate to that. You know, are you going to be better in your first year here? Are you going to be better in your fifth year? And I think that, you know, the answer is pretty obvious. But more often than not, you, my preference would be to uh, redshirt, you know, virtually all of our freshmen. Uh, the youngster that you mentioned, I think he's doing well right now. Uh, will he be in, he'll have the, as I indicated, he'll have the opportunity to compete, uh, make his way, and uh, we'll address, you know, whether that becomes redshirt or not uh, in a two or three weeks. Coach uh, Wendell asked about the, the walk-on captains and the stories of Ryan and BJ have been pretty well told. Jonathan Truman uh, has played next to some very experienced middle linebackers. This year, he's going to be you know, pretty much the leader of the linebacker core with some new guys. Can you talk about his journey from walk-on to this point and what does he mean to that linebacker group? Well, you know, Jonathan, uh, again, it goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier. I mean, it's the quality of character uh, the value system that Jonathan possesses that is so valuable. Uh, he's, a, he's a bright young guy. Uh, he's a young guy, you know, his journey has just has been one of hard work and doing things right. Uh, and, and that's, I mean, that's just, that's Jonathan. And, you know, people that have those values that I keep coming back to, you know, they're gonna succeed, you know, somehow, some way, they'll succeed. And uh, he's done it, and he's just done it the way, I guess, uh, somebody in a meeting, one of the coaches was talking about, the, you know, that's the way we do it here, a player that, or a coach that had played here. Uh, and, uh, and he just represents that, you know, so well. As many young guys do, he just happened to be a walk-on, which, as I indicated, I, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I don't go anyplace thinking about who's a walk-on, who's a scholarship player. They're all... They're all Kansas State University football student athletes and, uh, you know, the rest of it's immaterial to me. I know it's important to them whether they have a scholarship or not. I understand that. Uh, but, it, but he earned it, you know, and that's the, I mean, we scholarship so many walk-on youngsters in our program, but every one of them earns it. I mean, it's not, they understand there's no gifts. Uh, you, have, you have to earn it, and they earn it. And they earn it with hard work and effort. Uh, does he have some ability? Sure he does. You know, all of them do. You can't survive without it. But it's the other things that allow that, that ability to become more extensive and better and et cetera down the road. And, uh, you know, his leadership, uh, A, he's, he's a good leader first and foremost because he sets the example. You know, there isn't a player in our program that wouldn't look at Jonathan. True for a lot of other guys, but, you know, they look at Jonathan and they say, hey, you know, he, he works hard. Uh, does everything right, does it the way you ask him to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, uh, same song, second verse, you, you know, you've heard it all, but uh, good, good young guy, good young guy. Is that one of the reasons that walk-ons can be successful here is because they know that, you know, it, it is pretty much an even playing field that, hey, if I come to work and I show ability, it's not because some guy got recruited. That's and, right. And it was a five-star, any of that kind of stuff. It's like, hey, all I've got to do is come out and prove myself. That's, that's exactly right, and they and I honestly believe that they that they believe that to be true, uh, and it is true. And I, like I said, you know, when those of you that have been around, remember when we first came here, we had uh, uh, well, it was 40, uh, 47 guys on scholarship when you could have ninety five. And and I told you know the coaches that were with me at that time, I said I don't want to know who who's on scholarship and who's not on scholarship. Uh, don't, don't tell me, don't put it on a board, don't put it on anything, you know. Uh, I, all, I want to treat them all exactly the same. And it's kind of the way it's been ever since. A lot of schools these days want to hire the, the flashy young coach. And, and to be honest, the AARP crowd lately has been, has been showing them up. 
Uh, Kansas State was in a BCS Bowl game. George O'Leary last year. Mark D'Antonio, you can go right down the line. Uh, is experience uh, underrated sometimes in, in coaching? And, and is there any other reason for, for guys that have been around uh, as long as some of you guys uh, are having so much success? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, yet do I believe experience is important? Uh, it is. Uh, is it always the best thing? Uh, maybe, you know, if, if, if you experience doing the right things, it's an extremely <laughs> positive thing. If your experience is in doing the wrong things, then obviously it's probably uh, not, uh, not the best thing in the world. Uh, I, I think uh, Mark, Mark does a great job because Mark's a great coach. Uh, the, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of guys out there. I mean, young and older that, you know, are great, great coaches. And this is a day and age when that's probably not as easy to do as, you know, one might think. So. Coach, Danny Walniak, Channel 12 from Wichita. Um, one of your biggest question marks coming into the season is your running back position. And it's not something that you really have to deal with usually. But do you feel like Robinson has a pretty good grasp on this? Or is it kind of out there between all four of your running backs right now? Well, I think we'll have three or four young guys that uh, are presently invested in the competition. Uh, it will remain competitive. Uh, DeMarcus is uh, the most experienced back that we've had, and he's been very patient up to this point in time. Uh, he understands our offense. Uh, he can execute our offense. Fundamentally, he's very sound. Uh, he's got a, a skill level uh, that's, that's appropriate. Uh, a couple of, uh, as I said, a couple other guys, maybe three other guys, who are, are going to make it competitive, I'm sure. So DeMarcus is going to have to, you know, continue to uh, perform as well as he can. And I'm pretty confident that he will. Uh, I, I've not known him to be any, approach it any differently than that. You know, how quickly will we decide on who that's going to be? Uh, I, can't, I can't answer the question because I don't know. Uh, it's not apparent to us right now. Uh, in, in time, it will be. I mean, there comes a time where, you know, you have to make that decision. Uh, I don't know if it'll be easier then or, or more difficult. We'll, uh, we'll find out. So, but I'm, but I'm, I'm not unhappy with the direction any of them have gone in, in three short practices. Not short practices, but three practices. <laughs> hey, Bill. Curry Sexton doesn't really strike an imposing presence, but what do you like about him and, and what maybe do you expect out of him as he goes into senior year? Well, Curry is one of those guys that we you know, have been talking about. We have so many of them. I, you know, he's a, uh, he's a competitive young guy. Uh, he's a young guy that uh, has developed a very, uh, from an early age, a very uh, special value system. You know, he believes in all the things that we believe in. He presents them on the field and off the field as well. Uh, he's established himself as a meaningful leader in our, in our program. Uh, he's a guy you always know is going to be in the right spot at the right time. He knows how to get where he needs to go. Uh, and, he's, uh, and he's athletic as well. You know, he's got, uh, and, and he's, he has that, that kind of that football sense about him. Uh, which when I say, you know, he knows where to go and how to get there. Uh, he's just, uh, Curry, Curry would be a, uh, and I'm sure has been a, a great sandlot football player, you know, just because it's, you know, there's, there's not a lot of schematics go on in there, but he understands, you know, where to be and where not to be. He's just a good young guy. Mostly joking about this, about advising advising young potential coaches not to do wasn't, it. But wasn't joking at all. But, <laughs> but it's, so, if you weren't joking, I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on, on why. It, but but also tied in with that, what 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 do you think has been the most important thing about your own um, duration in this in this business and, and ability to keep thriving? Uh, not not just about winning, but I mean about your own mindset. Well. You know what? Uh, I, I'd probably answer it all in one one statement. Uh, it, it has changed. I mean, college athletics, football in particular, has changed dramatically over the years. You've all 
been in, you, you see it, and you know exactly what I'm going to say. I, you know, I think we've sold out. Uh, we're, we're all about dollars and cents. Uh, it no longer, uh, the, the concept of college football, no longer has uh, uh, any bearing on the quality of person, the quality of student. Uh, universities are selling themselves out, uh, no longer about education. Uh, you know, they talk a good game, but, uh, but we, you know, flat sold out the, those cameras over there. Uh, and TV is, uh, has made its way. And, and I don't fault TV. I don't fault, you know, whoever broadcasts games, et cetera. I mean, they've got to go make a living, and that's what they do. Uh, but, you know, uh, athletics, uh, football, is, as I said, is sold out for. You know, we've, we've, everybody's building, you know, Taj Mahal's again. You've heard me talk about that hundreds of times. And, and I think it sends, uh, uh, it sends a, a message, you know, and you, you know, and young, day, young people today, I think, are more susceptible uh, to the downside of that message, which says it isn't about education anymore. It's that we're saying it is, but you know it's really about uh, you know the glitz and the glitter, and and I think sometimes uh, you know values get distorted that way. You know, I, I I would hate to think that a young guy would make a decision about where he would get his education based on what a building looks like. Uh, if that's, you know, I, I, I was raised and always taught that, you know, it's what's in the building that counts, you know, and, you know, you go on campus and maybe uh, on any campus in the country of, of quality educational systems and they may have old, you know, uh, structures, you know, we've got structures here that are 100 and some odd years old. That doesn't make it mean that the people inside it are not going to give you a great education. You know, I, I applaud our professors. I mean, I've got an office that I can swim in, and uh, you know, and they're in a cubby hole someplace, uh, and I, and, and yet they go out and teach and promote education every single day, and I, I value that, you know, a great, uh, a great deal. You know, we're playing, you know, we talk about a young guy getting an education, and now we've expanded because of television. We've expanded the seasons. I mean, we're talking about a 15, 16 week season, then you add on four weeks of preparation, so you're talking about 20 weeks approximately. We're going to have a playoff system now, and it'll, it'll expand it more, and then we're going to end up expanding the playoff system, which is going to go even more. And you hear people talk about, you know, football being year-round, but th that's a competitive time where, you know, you're really, they're really invested in it. And, and you got schoolwork, you know, that you have to, that you have to do, last I heard anyway that you do, and, and you think about it, uh, the, uh, you know, a young guy has, uh, you know, however many hours he happens to be carrying, uh, you know, and, and that just goes on and on and on. You take so much time out of his, uh, you know, out of his day as it relates to football, and now you're talking about, you know, we started out Saturday afternoon, right? I mean, we're all, I mean, weren't we accustomed to to Saturday afternoon football. I mean, it's the biggest thing in the world. It truly was. And it, now there isn't any Saturday afternoon football. You know, you play at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning and goes uh, all the way through until midnight or 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then now, now we're playing on Thursdays. Now we're playing on Wednesdays. Now we're playing on Tuesdays. Now we're playing on Mondays. Sunday's next. We will get, I mean, we'll have seven days a week where they'll be playing college football games. Well, you know, if, if I'm a, a student athlete, if I'm going to play, uh, those, that, that takes, that's going to take two plus days out of my educational system. Day before, in all likelihood, in most schools, you're probably not going to go to class. You're going to go hibernate in a hotel someplace, and then the next day you're going to be there until game time and play. And uh, those are days you could be going to class and should be going to class. Now you put, you know, 15 of those. We we play. Uh, we have five Saturdays we don't play football this week within our season. Now it, tell me, you know, how that stuff happens. I mean, it, to me, that doesn't, that's not what football is about. Now, I, 
that's only my opinion. That doesn't mean that, and, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not upset with the people that, you know, promote some of that stuff because they're trying to do their thing. I mean, that's what they do. But you know, I just think we've lost sight of what uh, college athletics is really all about. So you got all this kind of going against your grain, and against the grain of a lot of what what you've known, and 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 yet, I mean. Obviously, this has been a very fulfilling thing for you. I, I just wonder how you've sustained yourself. Then, when you've got those kind of things that are bothering you, and and you know the the, the hectic, hard, long year to put together a football season. What what do you, what's what's been your key? Well, I you know I just stick to my net. I guess you know I mean this is what I believe in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you. I'll share it with our players. Uh, they know exactly how I feel. You know about it. Uh, and uh, you just, you know, you do the things that you think are right. And, and I'm in a position, that's why I feel, you know, with young coaches, you know, young coaches, uh, you know, as they work through, I don't want to see young guys, I don't want to see a Colin Klein or, you know, a Zach Hansen or any guys like that. I don't want to see them get into this and get distorted, you know, about things. I don't want them to, because they've got great values, and I don't want those to get altered by any stretch of the imagination. And, and hopefully they're, they can do it and they're strong enough. But, you know, since it is such a dollar and cent game, you know, you don't see guys sitting in the same chair for 20, 20 years anymore. You know, uh, nobody's gonna have it. Well, you know, I'm 100 years old, so I can afford it. I, you know, it doesn't, you know, I, if I'm, you know, if I'm gone tomorrow, I'm gone tomorrow and I, I got a place to go, you know. Uh, but you take a uh, you know 25 year old 35 year old coach, you know they they don't and uh, you know the streets are beginning to get full of you know guys that that don't. Anyway, that's we didn't. My, wasn't my original question, but I'm just curious based on what we've just been talking about. Is there a solution in your mind, or is it a situation where the the toothpaste is too much out of the? Well, I I, I don't have all the answers. You know, I I think. Uh, you know, I think, I think the people that can make all those decisions at a much higher level, you know, really need to sit down and, and, and think, think this through, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying, you know, money is not important to an athletic department, et cetera, but, you know, there are sources to keep things within reason and still you know have competitive programs and still do right by student athletes you know, I, uh, but it would take a lot of people sitting down and coming to some closure on some thoughts and some ideas and uh, try to you know reel it all in a little bit back to my original question this year's schedule is a little bit unique in that you play a conference game in week two and then you play a team like auburn uh, in the first month what kind of challenges does that present now or how does that change anything? Well, uh, you know, anytime you play play a game, you got a challenge. You know, and some of them are maybe a little bit more difficult than others. But uh, you know, I, probably the the biggest challenge, you know, for us is keeping things in perspective and and taking it a day at a time, and and worrying about you know our practice tomorrow morning and worrying about our meetings tonight and take things as they come and get invested wholly in that and you know uh, you know if we're looking forward to Auburn uh, then we'll get embarrassed uh, somewhere else along the road uh, it, we got embarrassed last year you know at the outset of the ball game because we took some things for granted you've heard me say that uh, you know and all I can do is caution you know everybody that's invested in it not to take you know our excuse me our first opponent for granted or our second opponent or uh, anyone else so you know when it comes to I mean Iowa State's an improved football team uh, but we can't get to Iowa State until we've had the opportunity to prepare ourselves you know and compete against uh, Stephen F. Austin and when that's over then we'll move into the next 